Hello there brothers and sisters, I want to welcome you to New Bible Study. Today we continue in Habakkuk 2. And today it is about the taunt of shame. As we read in Habakkuk 2 verse 15, 16 and 17, Woe to him who makes his neighbors drink. You pour out your wrath and make them drunk, in order to gaze at their nakedness. You will have your fill of shame instead of glory. Drink yourself and show your uncircumcision. The cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you, and utter shame will come upon your glory. The violence done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, as will the destruction of the beasts that terrified them. For the blood of man and violence to the earth, to cities, and all who dwell in them. To give you some background and context, the first taunt was about power, the second about greed, the third was about injustice, and the fourth taunt is about shame. That's this one. Note that the last phrase in the second taunt, verse 8, is repeated in the last phrase of the fourth, verse 17, that we read today. For you have shed human blood, you have destroyed lands and cities, and everyone in them. Okay, let's dive into the interesting points. First, the taunt. And I read uh, a, a piece of the verse again. Woe to him who makes his neighbors drink. You pour out your wrath and make them drunk, in order to gaze at their nakedness. The fourth taunt is about shame and disgrace. Yahweh provides a vivid picture of how the Babylonians enticed others to drunkenness to take advantage of them. The concept of exposed nakedness throughout scripture is a strong image which indicates shame, dishonor and grace. We can read it in Genesis 3 for example, Genesis 9, Exodus, um, Isaiah. And revelations you can uh, see it in the description the image in this taunt is meant to be shocking although in general the modern world have truly lost a sense of shame the Babylonian practice of including drunkenness exposing them for their own amusement at their captives expense is tantamount to rape and like many rapists, they used sex as a means to dominate and debase their victims. Essentially, the Babylonians were raping the people and lands they conquered in every way possible. As a note, while most English translations use wrath, the newer international version translates the word as uh, wineskin, as I read from commentators, the words are very similar, and the overall passage is difficult to translate. Most, however, prefer wrath. Then we dive into the cup of the Lord, and the text says, The cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you, and utter shame will come upon your glory. The cup of the Lord's right hand is a very strong metaphor with deep meaning and symbolism throughout scripture. The image of the cup is used by various Old Testament prophets to express the same awful truth. This cup filled with the wine of my wrath, records Jeremiah 25 verse 15. A cup large and deep, it will bring scorn and derision, predicts Ezekiel 23:32. And there are other names for this, such as the cup of wrath or the cup of staggering. Psalm 75, 8 uses this vivid description. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed, and he pours out from it, and all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the tracks. In Matthew 20, 20 to 28 the mother of James and John asked Jesus if her sons can sit beside Jesus in his kingdom the men are seeking prominence throughout their mother they want to be great Jesus answers 
Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? This is not a rebuke as we might expect. It's a simple question to which the brothers reply, yes, we are able to drink the cup. They didn't understand what Jesus is asking. He turns to all of his disciples who are angry at their request sets them straight as well as us. If you want to be great, it will be through love, the path of sacrifice, service and suffering. Being honored isn't greatness, it is following Jesus. In the New Testament, we see Jesus in the garden, sweating blood and praying to the Father that if it were possible, take this cup from me, but not my will, but your be done. And hanging on the cross, beaten, bloody, and gasping for breath, lifted his head and cried out, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus drank the cup of God's wrath in our place. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 In Revelation 16 we read of the seven bowls of God's wrath. And when the last one was poured into the air, we read something amazing. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and God remembered Babylon the Great to make her drain the cup of wine, of the fury of his wrath. Revelation 16.18 and the wrath of God was finished. Then we dive into the last interesting point is the consequences of rape. The violence done to Lebanon will overwhelm you. With the defeat of the Egyptian army at Karamis in 605 BC, the Babylonians rolled through Syria and Lebanon. Known for its lush mountainsides covered with magnificent and beautiful cedar trees, the wood from the trees were prized for their beauty and considered the best in the world for construction. We read in the IVP background bible commentary, we read this. According to his royal annals, Nebuchadnezzar ordered his army to build a road from the transport of the cedars of Lebanon. He describes how they cut through steep mountains, split rocks and open passages to build this commercial logging road. Then Nebuchadnezzar basically stripped the forests for their wood to build his palaces, temples and cities. At the same time, the animals in the area were almost hunted to extinction to feed the soldiers and workers. Many physiologists believe that rape is more about power and domination rather than sex. sex. As the Babylonians conquered, they raped the woman, raped the country's valuables and raped the land, and they raped Lebanon for her resources. Brothers, Habakkuk chapter 2 reminds us that God sees what is happening and he acts. The cup of judgment will come. But Jesus drinking of that cup of judgment for us means that we will never hear God's woe to us. For all true believers, Paul's confident assertion should be written across the woes of Habakkuk chapter 2. And it says, There is no oh sorry, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Make today a day of thanksgiving and praise. Thank God for the truth of his gospel and the fact that we will never have to drink the cup of the Lord's right hand which was served to the Babylonians. May God bless you all and I hope to see you in the next video.